Well, 6.1.2. Let me get out of this little hut. If you're going to do an experiment to get data on the rate of reaction, you always need to measure time plus something that changes in your reaction. So you need your stopwatch handy. And when it comes around to plotting this data on a graph, you should always make sure that time, it's represented by this clock tower, is on the horizontal axis, is on the x axis. So let's look at things that change in a reaction and how we can monitor them. If I have a reaction where a gas is liberated and that gas is allowed to escape, it's an open container, then the mass should go down as the gas escapes. So if I put some chalk in with some acid, carbon dioxide will be produced and the mass will appear to go down. So if I measure that and the time, that will give me information on my rate of reaction. A neutralization reaction, the pH will change. So a pH meter stuck into the mist. pH meter will monitor this reaction over time. Electrical conductivity may change as your reaction proceeds. For example, if you're producing ions in solution, electrical conductivity will increase. And so if you monitor that over time, that will show you, oh, oh dear, that was bound to happen. That will show you information about the rate of reaction. If you have a gas, you can measure the volume of the gas produced at a constant pressure and temperature. There's something called a gas syringe, which you stick into a reaction vessel, and as gas is produced, it will push that syringe back, allowing the volume to increase while keeping the pressure and the temperature constant. What you could also do is measure the pressure of a gas produced, assuming that you can keep the volume and temperature constant. And if you're going to keep the volume constant, you're going to need a very strong container for that. You could also measure temperature. It doesn't have to be gases. Most reactions uh, will get hotter, so some get colder. So you can measure the, the temperature and time of a reaction. And finally, oh, missed it. Pop it into that reaction vessel. And finally, you can measure the color change of a reaction. A lot of reactions change color. Use a colorimeter. 